remind yourself, your horse never lies. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to lie. They don't know how to lie. But we do. And we'll lie to our horse every single time we ride it. So lie to the horse is that I say, let's just turn to the left. And, and the horses start turning to the left, and you think, no, I want you to turn more. <laughs> so you lie to the horse. You didn't tell him more in the beginning. You just said, I want you to turn left. And you'll find yourself changing your mind constantly through a decision, thinking, I didn't want you to do that. Have you ever heard yourself say that to the horse? <laughs> Remember that you are building a foundation of communication. And that's what this is all about. You're building a foundation of communication. So as you explore your procedures in your arena, have that foundation be built to the point that your communication levels will be quite, quite high. Just as a relationship deal for all of us. There's a thing you can do all by yourself that'll make you such a bitter rider that you won't believe it. Okay? And that thing is if you have an enclosure of any kind, you start riding your horse, but you never pick up the reins. I mean, ever. Unless, of course, you're in trouble. But <clears throat> you ride without picking up the reins. And the whole purpose of this is you're going to ride, not guide. And in doing this lesson, and I recommend people if they'll do this, they'll do this every day for an hour for at least a week. Five to seven days. Yeah, the, the only thing that you can do to your horse in this lesson is impulsion. You can't slow him down. So impulsion, if your horse is approaching a corner, if, you, if the rider is not part of that, dis, of that process, the horse will go to the corner and stop. <clears throat> so when you are 20 to 30 feet from that corner, that's where your acceleration, where you start to increase the, the impulsion in your horse, impulsion will cause a decision. All right, so that horse will make a decision left or right. Now, when the horse makes a decision, he has turn signals already built into him with his ears. He can change his mind anytime he wants to, but we should be paying attention. The, the ear will always follow the, the direction or create the direction. He can say, I'm going to the right. No, I'm going to the left. You know, it's up to him. But the point of the lesson is that we are absolutely part of every decision that the horse makes. So you, what you're doing is you're studying, learning how to read your horse's decision. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It really is fun because there's, there's, no, there's nothing going on where you're trying to make anything happen. You're trying to learn something about your animal. And so what, when, I, when I mention that you don't have any control over slowing the horse down, you do, but it's not control of the reins. It has to do with when you slow down your riding. When, when you are riding, and when you're riding your horse, there's a certain amount of energy that pro is projected from the riding of your horse, and that energy always comes from your core. It's not in your legs, not in your hands. It's your core that presents energy going forward. Okay, so when so when we're riding a horse, this is the this is what we refer to as a fast seat slow seat fast seat slow seat so when you're let's say that you've had to cre increase impulsion in your horse because he's heading towards a corner. a corner that impulsion doesn't have to be raised up to the point that he's running it's just impulsion where he has to speed up his walk even if he breaks into the trot that's fine but once he makes that decision and goes left or right whatever it was then you just become the passenger and you ride in balance with the horse Okay, now, there's an interesting thing that happens to every rider, although many don't realize it. You will have a heavy foot yeah. in one stirrup or the other because of the way, just of your, your own personal balance. Very few people have legs that are exactly the same length. Okay, so, and you'll find yourself supporting yourself on one foot more than the other. It affects the horse. It affects the horse. If you, so if you're, you're, you're pushing on your right foot and you don't realize it, your horse is going to be always trying to go to the left. And so you'll find yourself pushing on that and pulling the horse to turn to the right and your body is saying, no, go left. And the horse is going, I'm trying. But if you take that foot out, all of a sudden you'll feel that horse come with you. 
And so all of these things fit into your, um, your horsemanship, or the way that you're presenting yourself to the horse. And it should be addressed as a curiosity by the rider, not something where, oh my gosh, I'm doing this wrong, I'm doing that wrong. Enjoy the whole process, because every time that, you, that things are wrong, it's an opportunity to learn something. And so then this never go. And this never. There's no completion to this. This is a. This is. I, I think the journey. The journey is the completion. Evolution. Yeah, you're evolving, and it never ends. And you, so you're never going to know everything about these animals. In fact, they probably know more about you than you do about them, because that's their job, to read. Everything in terms of animals. Anyway, that lesson of ride, don't guide is a, is a wonderful, and this, that's the fir first part of the lesson is spending a week every day for an hour just riding your horse and not guiding it. The second week, every decision that the horse makes, you become a part of it. So your reins are in front of you, and now the horse decides to go to the right, you'll pick up the right rein, but you won't pull on the horse. You'll just become a part. You'll make contact, but never a pressure. So you want to have the timing to be a part of that decision that the horse has made. And you continue that throughout that week of riding one hour every day, or whenever you can, of being a part of the decision that the horse makes, not the decision that you're making. And then on the third week, you start making the decisions based on the language that you recognize from the horse. In other words, you see the horse setting up, you know because the horse is slightly tilted this way, and your feet are balanced, you're not pressing more on one stirrup than the other, you're going to get a proper turn to the right. So now you start affecting the decisions of the horse. It has such a profound effect on your horsemanship that if you were to videotape yourself throughout that whole process, by the time a month was over with, you know, three or four weeks, uh, you would hardly recognize your riding just because you are a part of the horse. You have to learn how to, you know, learning how to ride, uh, unfortunately, has to, is about balance. It's not about controlling the horse. You have to first learn how to ride the horse before you become the controller of the horse. And so those are things that you can, and I didn't outline any of that, but it's, it's a, um, a thing that you want to take advantage of because it's just a lot of fun and it'll, it'll change you tremendously.